Hey, what is up, viewers? Patrick from Williamsburg, Blue Pirate Games Galore here. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you the story behind how I got started filming Williamsburg Sports and also the story behind Williamsburg Blue Pirate Games Galore. So, before I get started with today's video, I do want to let you viewers know that, um, that if you haven't heard, the 17U baseball game that was scheduled for today against Tyrone has been canceled. I haven't heard anything from Mike Refner about a rescheduled date, but when I hear something, I will let you viewers know. Um, you viewers already know that the game that was supposed to happen last Sunday against, I believe it was Norman Bedford, that game has been um, canceled as well. So we basically have two canceled games and two two breaks and uh, so with that out of the way let's get into it so a month ago I was asked by Rita Gorsuch actually Rita Gorsuch messaged me in a Facebook messenger group that I made and here's what she said I think it's great that you got interested in filming. Patrick, I have enjoyed watching the games you filmed, even if I had attended the game. And then she asked me two questions. What did get you interested in filming? Did you learn a lot from the games? Looking forward to watching the ones to come. Okay, let me take a drink first. So I'm going to answer the first part of this question. So the first question that Rita asked me, the first part, I'm going to read it again. So she asked, what did get you interested in filming? So that is a really good question. So to start answering this question, I'm going to be taking you viewers all the way back to February of this year. So our varsity girls were in the playoffs, and when a when either our varsity girls or our varsity boys make playoffs, then the cheerleaders are allowed to ride the buses with the players and the coaches to the games. So this year it was the varsity girls and the varsity boys. So. It was the second game of the playoffs this year. Our varsity girls beat, I believe it was Northern Bedford, at Claysburg. So we moved on to the ICC championship game. And the next day, it was the ICC championship game. And I was, now in case you viewers probably didn't know, I was a cheerleader before I... Uh, started doing this so I went to just about every just about every playoff game with my cheerleading teammates and the players and the coaches so we won the ICC championship that day and the tradition every year I don't want to say it's every year because it's not like every year that we win the ICC championship there will there will be years where we don't make it and years that we fall short but this particular year we won the ICC championship I believe it was the fourth one and we actually won it back to back to back to back years I believe this was the fourth straight year in a row that our varsity girls had won the ICC championship so before that occurred, I brought my camera. Now, the camera that I'm using right now for this video, I didn't use this back then. I actually used a different camera that I used for my rail fanning videos. So, I brought my camera and my tripod in case we won the ICC championship so I could catch the escort so 
every time we, anytime we win a championship, whether it's our varsity girls or whether it's our varsity boys, in either basketball or baseball or softball or cross country or anything like that, we will get escorted by the fire company. And not only the fire company, but also the police department. Let me check to see if the video is still recording. Still recording. Okay. So, anytime that we win a championship, like I said, if whenever one of our teams wins a championship, we get escorted by the police department and also the fire company. So this year it was the varsity girls, and we had already just won our ICC championship. So, after we stopped to get, after we stopped to get dinner, we went to, actually we went to the U.S. Hotel Tavern for, for dinner after the game, and uh, this was a very special victory for our varsity girls, because, who was our bus driver during playoffs this year, just so happened to be Jerry Palmer. So, I'm going to announce this in a couple minutes, but let me get through this part first. So, anyways, so, yeah, just, so Jerry just so happened to be our bus driver for the first game of the playoffs for the varsity girls, and then the second game of the ICC playoffs where we won the ICC championship and it just so happened to be his birthday. I don't know how old he was that day, but we went to the US Auto Tavern to celebrate his birthday. We had, we had a lot of fun and then we got back on the bus and we were on our way home from the US Auto Tavern and also from Claysburg where we won our ICC championship for the fourth straight year in a row. And now, of course, let me just mention this also. This would only be my third, my third escort. I was escorted two years in a row when I was a part of the junior high cheerleading squad. And uh, we were, and actually we were cheering for the junior high girls. Now, the girls that were a part of this year's ICC championship team were the same girls that won the ICC championship in 2019 when they were a part of the junior high team. So that was so that was really cool. So we were on our way back. I had my camera and tripod. We won the ICC championship for the fourth straight year in a row. We were on our way back and there is an area in Williamsburg, now I cannot remember where it is, where the fire trucks and I think it might just be the fire trucks, they're gonna they're parked waiting for our bus to to come and then once that once our bus comes, then the fire company will lead and you know we're on our way into town. Let me just check again if the if it's still recording. So we get to that area where the fire company is, and the bus actually not the bus. The fire trucks lead, they come right in front of us, and they lead us all the way back into town. So that's when I start recording the escort. And you know the girls were the girls were enjoying themselves. They were singing and just having a good, just having a nice time. And I was just silent. And I was recording, and and so that was that was not. So in case you're wondering, is that the reason why you got started into filming? The answer is no, it's not. But it does have a part in what actually was the inspiration and the reason. So, uh, I filmed the ICC Championship Escort, and 
put it up on Facebook, and so then in March, our varsity girls, they play at uh, Mount Aloysius College in Crescent. This time for the District 6 Championship, they have not won a District 6 Championship since 1998. So, we were, I don't know, I don't think we were invited as cheerleaders to the District 6 Championship game, but we, but we got to cheer at that game. We went on to win our, our first District 6 Championship since 1998. And the same thing happened where, you know, we stopped somewhere, got something to eat, and then we made our way back. In case you guys were wondering where we actually ate at, we actually ate at Applebee's. We ate the U.S. Hotel, Tav US Hotel Tavern, the ICC Championship victory, and then after the District 6 Championship victory, we went to... Applebee's for for dinner for the rest of actually after the after the victory there so obviously it happens again where we're on the road Jerry's driving and when we get to the same so we get to the same area where the fire trucks are parked waiting for our bus to come and same thing happens, I start recording. Now, something I want to note is that there is a part in the video where I actually have to cut a part out and you viewers are actually going to see both videos. I'm going to put them in a, I'm actually, they're going to be a part of another video that I'll be doing, which I'm going to take a quick break from answering Rita Gorsuch's question and then I'm going to return after making this um, quick announcement. Okay. So. So viewers, that last part was cut out. I was in the middle of making my announcement, so I'm going to announce it again. So before I get back to Rita Gorsuch's question, I have an announcement. So this coming Thursday, September 21st, will be the first year, actually it will be one year since Jerry Palmer was appointed as the head coach of the Varsity Boys Baseball Team by the Williamsburg School Board. And I'm going to just read you a little bit from what the Outside the Mirror said about, you know, this particular, you know, what happened, or what the scoreboard school board did. So, so Jerry Palmer was appointed by the school board uh, and he was appointed as the varsity baseball head coach. Now this was Tuesday evening. I think Tuesday evening was September 21st of last year. The Tuesday that the school the school board appointed him, and it and it actually is it actually is Palmer's second year helping out with the district. He was a volunteer during the 2021-22 season, and he is replacing he replaced Robert McCall, who was the head coach before him. So this Thursday, like I said, is going to be one year since Jerry Palmer was appointed as the new varsity baseball head coach replacing Robert McCall. So I'm going to make a very special video and in that, in that video I'm going to be talking about uh, what it's been like recording Jerry Palmer's varsity team and I guess kind of Jerry Palmer in general because he actually was our bus driver when when I when I was at part of the cheerleading squad. He took us to the first, the second, the District 6 championship game during basketball season. And he also took us to the uh, varsity basketball playoff game. It was, it was only one in uh, Huntington. So if you viewers want to hear that story, 
Uh, stay tuned. That'll be coming up on Thursday. So, just wanted to get that out there. Okay, back to Rhea Gorsuch's question. So, after the District 6 championship game, and like I said in the last part of the video, I had to cut a part out, and it was really fun being able to record the escorts for not only the ICC championship, which we won, but also the District 6 championship that we won. So, that brings me to the answer to the big question that Rita asked me. So, Jill Norris was actually the person that got me started into filming. Uh, for the baseball, I just had, I don't know if I had a thought in my mind or something, but I just had a feeling that I wanted to start filming games because, you know, there was nobody that was at the baseball games filming. There were people that were there taking pictures of the kids and stuff, but there wasn't pe there wasn't anybody there that was filming the games. So that's when I said, "I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a try. I'm gonna try and go to every varsity game and film them." And so that's what I did. Now before I continue with the story, um, so in case you don't know about Jill Norris. So she so every so every home and road basketball game for the Lady Pirates, she she's the one that does the live streams and she does the play by play and the commentary and she's the one that does the live streaming for the basketball games. And she's actually a part of my announcement that I will do Somewhere I'm gonna do somewhere around I'm gonna say somewhere around the end of the video. Um, so Jill got me started into filming, and basically because anytime that we had a road game, I was watching her watching her live streams anytime that we were on the road, and her commentary is really good, and that's when I thought, you know. This this is something that I should do for baseball since there's nobody that there's nobody in Williamsburg that's filming baseball games. And so that's what I did. So my first game that I filmed for baseball, actually the first baseball team was the varsity. And yes, Jerry Palmer was the head coach. The assistant coaches were Michael Farrell, who was my phys ed and health teacher, uh, Dooner, which I don't even know who Dooner is, and then Lambert Palmer was the other assistant coach. Lambert Palmer is Jerry Palmer's uh, one of his one of his kids. So, anyways, so first game, of course, doesn't go well. We lose eighteen to one. But, even though it was a bad game, you know, it was really cool to be able to film the game and be able to, you know, be able to, you know, be able to listen to the audio and stuff. And when I first did this, I just posted the games on Facebook, on the Williamsburg Pirate Baseball Facebook group. That was the place where I, where I posted a lot of the, the baseball videos, and I still do that today with the 17 year. So I did that and then the next game we had was against Kerwinsville at home. Now obviously if you viewers have seen that video, Kane Hughes had that successful bunt. There was a there was a rundown and a really nice out between third and home. We won that next game. And actually I'm not sure which game it was. I believe it was, actually, it was the Mount Union game. So after the Mount Union game, I decided one day, I should make a YouTube channel. I should see, I should give this a try. So, you know, I was posting these games on Facebook, but then I thought, 
what if there's people on YouTube that want to see them? So that's when I decided to make the YouTube channel Williamsburg Blue Pirate Games Galore. And the videos, it started with the varsity baseball and the varsity softball and all that. And our varsity girls, or uh, excuse me, softball team, they didn't do so well. I only did three games, but it was a lot of fun to do. And I also did, vo uh, I did mainly varsity baseball. And our boys really didn't do too badly, although we did have a bad record going into the playoffs. But we did actually did good after we got, so we got eliminated in the second round by Bishop Guilfoyle. That was the last game this year that I filmed for varsity baseball. And I do plan on doing varsity baseball again next year. So anybody that, that wants to know, hey, Patrick, are you going to still do varsity baseball? Are you still going to film those, film those games? Yes, I am. I, st I will still do it. So that's going to be that's going to be fun. So like I said, I first started with varsity baseball and varsity softball and I mainly did home games, but for varsity baseball since you know, we had playoffs and I wanted to I wanted to go do a a, a road playoff game. And the first one that that I actually went to was the one down in Nantigolo when we played Black Lake Valley. And so give your point on what happened there. There was a moment where Alex Brantner mishandles the ball and you know Logan Brantner, Alex Brantner and one of the Black Lake Valley players collides and luckily Logan Brantner's okay and that was the first. That was actually the first playoff game they actually filmed for varsity baseball, and I'm gonna also. I also didn't mention this yet, but I'm gonna kind of track my way back to like varsity and give some of my favorite memories. Um, that'll be coming up, but I want to get through this first. So after varsity baseball ended and after varsity softball ended. I needed a team to do. So, me and my mom went to Best Buy and bought this. So the camera that I'm using right now, that's a, that's the that's a Canon. And I bought that at Best Buy. And I'm not going to mention the price. So, I wanted to try it out. So, after the uh, Bishop Gilfoyle game. I so I was so basically I also want to mention this too. So Kendall Norris, she played vo, uh, varsity softball, and she actually got me started in the in the into the play by play part of the videography. And Ryan Gorsuch, who is related to Rowan, he really liked the commentary so much that he gave me an opportunity to do the All Star tournament games. And I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to that part in just a moment. But yeah. So I needed a team to film to get ready for that. So that's when I went on Facebook and I messaged somebody under the name Michael Joseph and I said and I asked if if he happened to know or if somebody happened to know who the if there was a four, because I heard there was a 14U team and there was also an 8U team. And Mike Refner sent me a message and said, you know, he gave me the schedule for the 14U. And, of course, you know, he didn't really know who, who was co the coach of the 8U. So, I went to my first, four, so my first 14U game was against Bellwood. And that game featured the Preston Long walk-off. Which, if you guys want to see that video, it is up on YouTube. And that was my very first 14U game that I filmed. And, by the way, that was a lot of fun. Okay, so, the first baseball team that I did was Varsity. 
The second team I did was varsity softball, and the third was 14 year. So, for the viewers that didn't get that part, so I got a new camera from Best Buy. It's a Canon. That's the one I'm using right now for this video. And so I needed somebody, I needed a team to film to get ready for the All Star tournament. So that's when I reached out to somebody. I actually reached out to Mike Refner, and he sent me a message and sent me the schedule for the 14U. So the first 14U I did was the the first 14U game I did was against Bellwood, uh, UVHA. We were under. So we were under Z Max VFW Z Max, and I did. All the home games, like I did for the varsity boys baseball and the varsity girls softball. Our so our fourteen U went ten and five. They also made playoffs like our varsity boys baseball team did. And then we lost to the same team that we actually we lost the same team we played. The very first game that I recorded for 14 U, we lost to that team in the first round of playoffs. And that would be the Bowdanis UVHA Blue Devils. So that was the end of that. And there was of course some great moments. I'll get to them in just a moment. So then the that's when the All Star tournament season started. And the first All-Star tournament that I did, I'm trying to remember this. I'm trying to remember if it, I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think it was maybe the 8U Yeah, the 8U boys. So the 8U boys was when I was where I started. And it was the first time that I ever was up. So when you do All-Star tournament games, you're up in a press box and you're you got a microphone and you're what's your job is you're basically going to be announcing the you're going to be announcing that you're going to be announcing the, the names of the batters and the pitchers whenever whenever a batter's up to bat and whenever a pitcher is whenever there's basically a new pitcher so like for example um, one of the kids that played uh, 8U baseball during the All-Star tournament was Seth Eisenberg. So I would say, now up to bat is number seven, Seth Eisenberg. And I would do that for every player on not just the Williamsburg team, but also the the other team that that we played against. And our 8U didn't do so good. So then up next was the 12U baseball. And actually, the so the All Star tournament started at the tail. So at the so while that was happening, the 14U playoffs started, and we obviously had that game against Bowood, which we lost. And uh, so, anyways, so. So well, I had the eight U game. I did the eight U games. You know, I also did the fourteen U games as well, but all obviously on the same day. So in the very next tournament that I did was the twelve U. We actually did really good. Well, we didn't do so good first of all, but we did manage to get into an elimination game against Belfont, and we came back and beat them. I think it was either it was either six five or five four. I'm gonna have to look at the video. But that was an amazing game. We were down, and then we never gave up, and we just came back. We just stormed back and was able to tie it up, and then take the and then win the game on a on a game winning sack fly. That was a great moment. But then ultimately, our twelve U. I think they. I don't know where. I don't know where they finished. But anyways. That was the end of them. So then up next I did the 8U 
softball this time. And our 8U didn't do too badly. We moved up. Actually, we moved all the way to the championship game against Bowen. And we lost the championship game. We came in second. So, throughout every tournament that I did, which included the 8U baseball, the 12U baseball, the 8U softball, and the 10U base, yeah, 10U baseball, I'd be up in the press box announcing. Now, I was able to, I was allowed to pick games. So, whatever game that I wanted to announce, I could announce it. So, I always wanted to make sure that one of those games was, was going to be where a Williamsburg, our Williamsburg team, a Williamsburg team is playing. So, the last one I did was 10U. And our 10U, we, we played Central, or Spring Cove, beat them, and then we played Southern Huntington. We lost in a really bad fashion. It was a basically, it was basically a blowout game. So then, but for the viewers wondering if I still did baseball or the like the All Star tournaments after our team got eliminated, I sure did. Like after the uh, like after the like after we got eliminated in uh, AU baseball, I did the the championship game between Hollidaysburg and Tyrone. And then for like, and then for the twelve U baseball, I did. I can't remember who I did. And then eight U softball, I obviously did the Williamsburg championship game against Bowen. And then ten uh, U baseball, I did. East End and Southern Huntington, and then Hollisburg and East End in the or not East End, Hollisburg and Southern Huntington in the championship game. So. I still did, I still record baseball, even though there were times where our teams got eliminated. So, after that, I had a, I had a nice, I had a very nice break, and I didn't do too much, I just worked on like, you know, I basically worked on video, I worked, still worked on videos, I did a couple countdown videos from like, you know, with all the with like the videos I had so far and stuff, and that's also a part of an announcement that I'm going to be making uh, coming up in the coming up in the video. And just a just a minute, let me check if the camera's still on recording. Yep, still recording. Okay, so so I was basically at home working on videos. Now I was still doing my like real fame videos and stuff. But I didn't have any anything else happening. So that's when I talked to Dalton Hoey and I asked him if or like when 17 U was starting. So I was going through the Williamsburg Pirate Facebook group but baseball Facebook group and found out about a, about 17 U. We were a part we were we were a part of a 17 U team last year. Dalton Hoey was the coach. And Dalton Hoey messaged me back and said that Jerry Palmer was the head coach. And, of course, that was, ex that's, that was exciting news. So. Yeah, I ran to, ran to Jerry at, the, uh, at my graduation party. And, you know, he didn't say anything about the 17U baseball and stuff. Well, then, obviously we had that dilemma where we we didn't have enough kids for a 17 U team because football was happening and it looked like that I was going to be dealing with like a three month break before before starting basketball season this year. But Mike Refner was able to get was able to get enough kids to start a start to have a 17 U team. So we now have our own 17 U team and we. So currently in the season, we are three and zero. We won all three of our games so far. We've beaten out Tuna nine to nothing. We've beaten Tyrone eight to three. And our most recent game, we have beaten 
Central, which is Dunmire, by a final score of 24 to nothing. Man, think about that. That's a that's a blow that's what a blowout looks. If you want to see what a blowout looks like, we blew out a team from Spring Cove 24 to nothing. That's a huge victory. And that's probably one of my favorite games I'd ever that I ever did. Okay. So to recap, the first question that Rita Gorsuch asked me when she asked me how I got started and how I got interested into, into filming uh, yeah filming to recap it was a combination of Jill Norris and the idea that or actually the thought that there there was nobody doing ba nobody filming baseball and you know just wanting to do it for the people that don't make it to games, so that they could be able to to watch the games and basically see what happens, win or lose. So that is how Williamsburg Blue Pirate Games Galore got started. Let me see if the camera's still on. It's still on. Okay. So, very next question. So. Rita Gorsuch asked me, after this question, she asked me, did you learn a lot from the games? So, that's a really good question. So, yes, I did learn a lot from the games. Now, you viewers probably want to know, what specifically did you learn from the games? And that's what I'm going to answer right now. Okay, so the question that Jill asked, or, or not, excuse me, not Jill, Rita Gorsuch. So, this is not a live stream, but for the viewers just tuning in, I guess we'll just, I guess I'll just pretend there's viewers tuning in. So, I just answered the question that Rita asked me of how I got started in filming, and now I'm currently answering the question of did you learn a lot from the games? So, yes, I did learn a lot from the games. Now, your viewers are probably wondering, what specifically did you learn from the games? Well, for starters, so for starters I learned, you know, you can, you can film games and you can, you can think that your team is going to win, but they say it ain't over until it's over. And uh, one thing that I've learned from the games, especially, like, one thing that I learned is that no matter the result, now, I will tell you a story. So when we played Glendale, now, this was the worst game that I, now, I, I, I got to say this. This was the worst baseball game that I'd ever filmed. Not only the fact that I was there, actually, it wasn't the fact that I was there. But the fact that I actually filmed it. So we played Glendale. And we had some really bad things happening. You know. We got beaten 14-9. That was the final score. Logan Brantner and Parker Crowdover both had solo home runs. And one of the craziest moments during the game was where... Culver Blanc was bunting, so he bunted. He made to first. I don't know if it was at first or at third, but there was a really bad call, and everybody that was at the game, they started like they start complaining, and a couple of a like, couple of uh, I guess I could say a couple of batters later, Sam Parks is up. One of the kids from our team says something, they were like, they were, I think they were like, oh, this is this guy out or whatever? And I think it was Luke Uplinger, he's like, he's like, shut up. And then, literally, the umpire that was umping that game, he didn't fully snap, but he kind of, he kind of snapped. And he gave us a, a dugout warning. And every time, 
that we allowed a run on defense. I had a water bottle. I always bring a water bottle to the game so I have something to drink. That water bottle that I that I drank, it every time every time we did something bad on defense, that water bottle was spiked into the ground. And man, that was the worst game ever. And one thing I learned from that game, and actually I've learned it now, is that no matter what happens in a game, whether we whether we come out victorious or whether we come out lo lose lose I don't want to say losers but like whether we win or whether we lose, that's not what matters. What actually matters is I'm at a game, I'm filming it for the people that can't make it to games, and I'm a, I apologize, viewers, if I get a little get a little faith. Fi a little, give a little faith talk as long as I'm as long as I'm giving glory to my to my heavenly father and my lord and savior as long as I'm doing that and as, as long as I'm doing it for the people that don't make it to, that can't make it to games so they can watch it that's all that matters and that's one of the things I learned that's one of the things I learned from the games I guess I can say another thing I learned is that like new so new angles okay so you viewers probably saw in the video in the in the first baseball videos, I was filming behind a fence, behind a fence, and all you could see was the the pitcher, the batter, the catcher, and the the home plate umpire. So that was where I that's where I first filmed. And then when we played Northern Bedford during senior night, I decided I wanted to try a new angle. And so that day, actually when I got there, talked to Jerry Palmer, see if see if I would be allowed to film. So there's an area near third base at our varsity field, and I was wondering if I could if I would be allowed to film there. Well, I thought well Jerry thought that I was going to be filming like. You know, you know, like in like in front of the like in front of that fence. But no, I actually meant behind that. So, so where I'm at now is I'm behind the fence, along the along, along by actually it's by third base. So that's where I'm set up at for games, and that'll be my that'll be actually be my spot for the future for the near future. So. One thing I learned is that, you know, it's okay to try something new. And the play-by-play, -play, you know, I, I've gotten used to doing it. You know, when I first did it, I was just like, so like for for uh, uh, softball, like the first softball game that I did, I just I just did play-by-play -play a little bit, and then once I once we once I did the second once we did the second game. Or I filmed the second game. I really got into really got into the play by play, and it actually and I actually did really good. Uh, so I'm really good at like. So what I'm really good at with like the, the play by play and stuff is like I'm able to, I'm able to just you know, like talk nor like like, like talking to normal like at a normal tone, you know when. You know with with strikes being thrown and balls being thrown and stuff. But then I'm able to get really enthusiastic whenever we hit, whenever we have a base hit or a home run. We had a home run for softball. We haven't had a home run yet for uh, baseball. Although we had an inside the park home run for 14 u and we had an inside the park grand slam by Ron Gorsuch in 17 u So I've gotten very close to calling a home, to actually play by playing a home run. So, yeah, the play-by-play -play is actually really good. So that's one of the things I learned is is it's okay to try something new. And another thing I learned from the games is also there's always room for improvement. And like I mentioned with the play-by-play, -play, once I got used to once I got used to like announcing names and numbers and giving score updates and stuff, I basically had the hang of it. 
it was basically it's basically like I was riding a bike without training wheels. Like I was able to like I was able to do I was able to do the play by play and it it right now it's really easy to do. So that was another thing I learned. There's always so to recap the second part of Rita's question. So what I've learned is no matter what happens in a game as long as I'm glorifying my, as long as I'm giving glory to my Lord and Savior and my Heavenly Father, and as long as I'm doing it for the viewers and for the people that don't make the games, that's all that matters. I also learned that it's okay to try something new, and that also includes try new angles. And the last thing I learned is. Is that there's always room for improvements. So that answers both questions, and that's my that's kind of my story of how I got started in the Williamsburg Blue Fire Games galore and the filming. So I'm going to share a couple of memories now. A couple memories that I that I uh, some moments that I enjoyed during my year, my first year of baseball and softball and all that. So. Going back to varsity, so the I'm going to start with the very first varsity game that I did, which was against Mount Union. Now we did get beaten 18 to one, but one moment I did enjoy. This was a really good moment. So Preston Long was up to bat, and it was the bomb of the first inning, and I think we're I don't even know what we were I don't even we were down by something I'm not sure what. Actually, how much? So Preston's up to bat. I think it was the very first, the very first pitch. Preston hits it, and then Jerry yells, "Add a bit, add a baby!" And it was at the right. It was literally at the right time. Jerry's "Add a baby," and then Preston's single came at just about the. It was at the right time, and uh, in the video, in this video here. I'm going to put a clip of that exact moment so you viewers can can see what it was like. And I'm going to pretend right now. So here's a clip of that exact moment. Okay, so the next moment that I'm going to mention, going to go to the Kerwinsville game. So we played Kerwinsville after Mount Union. And there were so many great moments. But my favorite one had to be whenever K and Sues hit it, hit that successful bunt, and uh, I don't even know if anybody called it, but K and Sues successfully bunted, and it was it was a really cool moment. That was the very first bunt that I actually got on tape, and actually Colbert Blunts, who graduated this year with me, he actually went on to do this. In almost every game, almost every home game that we had, and I also am going to put a clip in there. And so, if you viewers want to see that clip, I'll put it in there, put it in this video as well. So now, going to Penn's Manor. So we played Penn's Manor. So Luke was the pitcher, and I'm not sure what the count was, but Luke Luke Uplinger. He he pitches, throws, the batter for Penn's Manor misses it, and it's strike two. Count was the count was two one. Yeah, count was two one. So when Luke threw that pitch and the batter missed it and it went in the went in our catcher's glove, I believe that was out. Al yeah, Alex Brander was the catcher. And when that happened. Jerry Palmer was like, Luke, guess up, Blanger, huh? And Jerry was trying to find out the nickname for Luke Uplinger. So then, I believe it was Park Crownover that suggested Uppy. So then Jerry's like, let's go, Uppy, one time here, one time, Uppy. He threw it and struck the guy out. Viewers want to see that video? That'll also be a part of this. That'll also be in the video as well. In this video as well. So that's the Pensmere game. 
Uh, going to the West. Now we're going to go to the West Branch game. So my nephew got a single. C.J. Smith is my nephew, by the way. But the biggest moment was when Preston Long hit that walk-off home run. And three hours after the game, it was found out that we actually. So Jerry put in an illegal pitcher. So Luke was an illegal pitcher. And we actually lost the game by forfeit. But before that happened, Preston Long hit that game-winning home run out of the park. That was the game winner, and we won that 6-5. to five. That's another favorite moment of mine. And the video of that moment will also be up in this video. So, now going to the Moe Shannon Valley game. This is another good one. So, so let me set the stage. So Alex Brantner is up to bat, and, and I'm not sure what the score was. So I start recording, and Jerry says, Big A, B, and so the first pitch is thrown. Alex thought that was, I think he must have thought it was a ball. And um, I'm trying to remember what Jerry said. Let's see. Hmm. I don't remember the first part at the moment. Oh, I know. I think I might know this. I don't remember the first part, but he said, Alex, I'll have to sit you down here right now or something like that. You don't blame me for it. Look at some pitches. You get pitches. You get three. And uh, one of the one of the uh, players that was not playing started laughing, and or it might have been or it might have been Alex laughing, and Jerry said bunt then. Well, then, so then the next pitch is thrown. Alex hits it. It's a it's a single, and that was a that was a really. I, I don't know if I don't know if it was a good moment for Jerry Palmer, but that was a really cool moment for me. Because, you know, because that's the like that's probably that was probably the first time that J I've ever gotten Jerry like yelling at yelling at one of his players for something. That video clip will also be in this video. He also yelled at Rowan Gorsuch and Sam Parks for box. Sam Parks was against Mount Mount Union. Rowan Gorsuch's was against Bellwood. We lost both of, the, both of those game, games, by the way. So then, the next moment, we played Glendale. Like I said, we lost 14-9. But one of the coolest moments was when... was when Parker Cronover... And Logan Brantner both hit solo home runs. And those were the first home runs in baseball I'd ever gotten on tape. If you want to see those clips, those clips will also be in there. So then, we play, we're going to go all the way to, now obviously Culver Blanc is also bonded. He successfully bonded. So now going into the, let me see if the, I think it's still, our camera's still recording. It's still recording. Okay. So now, going to Nancy Glow and doing the the Black Big Valley game. One of my favorite moments, yes, the moment where Alex Brantner, Logan Brantner, and that uh, runner for Black Big Valley collided. That was a that was a, that was an interesting moment because if you watch the video, the commentary. Is is I don't know if it, I don't want to say if it, I don't want to say it was funny, but like it w it just came out totally crazy. Well, anyways, Culver Bond's bunted, and actually, so Culver Bond was up to bat, and I was up I was up in the bleachers. Uh, Jeff Dettweiler was there, Lisa Murgis was there. Uh, Bailey Detwar and Lily Neary, Lily Neary were, were there, and 
I said something. I wasn't talking to Culver Bunch like directly, but I was like, you know, I was like Colton, you know, this is, you know, it's. Oh, I know what I said. It's bunt time, Colton, uh, because there was one person that there was a one of our runners was at third, and Colton Verbalance, So the pitch is thrown. Colton Verbalance bunts it. That one run comes home. Colton Verbalance is able to make it to first. I think he had an RBI single uh, during that moment. He either had an RBI single or an RBI double R. I, I cannot. I actually cannot remember that. Cannot remember which one it was. But anyways, that was a really cool moment. And then there was another moment where Alex Brenner was up to bat, and he hit this RBI double. And I said, and that's definitely worthy of a dinner date with Lily Neary. So, uh, Lily Neary and Alex Brantner were, oh, uh, excuse me, were dating. So, uh, basically that was, I guess that was kind of where that came from. Uh, if you want to see clips of both of those moments, uh, I will also have them up in this video as well. So that was Black Week Valley. Now going to the final game, which was Bishop Guilfoyle. My favorite one has to be Alex Brantner's inside the park home run. It was the coolest moment ever. And the commentary is really good. So if you want to see that video, I'll also have that video in in this clipped into this video as well. So that was a cool moment. Okay, so, now going to the softball. Now, one of my favorite moments during softball, and the video will not be in it because, you know, I might, 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 might make this video too long. Actually, you know what? I, I guess for every video, if you viewers want to find it, um, go to Williamsburg Blue Park Games Galore, the YouTube channel, and look up the, look up the, uh, look up the video. I also did. Uh, I also do top ten plays of the week and top twenty plays of the week. So, if you want to find a specific play, you can look. You can you can look in the in all of them top plays of the week and season to find them. So, softball. Carol Lansbury had two home runs. Uh, one was against West Branch and one was against Moshan Valley. And then Billy Harsh had two bunts. And Chelsea Lane also had a home run. This was against Bellwood. So that takes care of takes care of softball. So, 14U baseball. Preston Long had a walk-off against Bellwood. Connor Harker, Anthony Neary. Connor Harker and Anthony Neary had RBI, or actually had had inside the park home runs. Damian Williams had a walk off against Tyrone. Nolan Carper had an RBI triple, so that take care takes care of fourteen U. I'm gonna skip the the uh, All Star tournaments because there's there's way too many. Seventeen U. So 17U, my favorite one out of every single moment that I've gone on tape during this season so far, my favorite one has to be where Rowan Gorsuch hits the inside the park grand slam, and I call it, and it happens, and we have a 17, that's right, 17 to nothing lead. That is amazing. That was amazing. And we wanted to win that game 24 0. An honorable mention has to be where Kane Sues has them two RBI singles. So that was really cool. So that take, takes care of all the moments. Now, this is the part where I'm going to make some announcements. So I made one announcement about a special video coming up this Thursday. So, on Thursday, October 5th, 
I'm going to be doing my very first junior high football game. Juniata Valley and Mary Shannon Valley. We will be playing, or they'll be playing up at the Bob Miller Memorial Field in Williamsburg. I'll be there to film the game. The game is at 6 o'clock. So, uh, be watching for that video. Uh, I'm going to say probably October 6th is going to be when that video will be fully up. So, that's one announcement. My other big announcement is during the off season, so in between baseball and basketball, I'm going to be doing a series called Senior Spotlights. Or I, it's either going to be Senior Spotlight or Senior Spotlights. Spotlights. But in that in these videos, or in those videos, I'm going to be telling you viewers about a specific senior that either graduated this year or will be graduating next year. I'll explain their I'll explain their base like you know them playing baseball or softball. Uh, give them just talk about them, just kind of describe them, and then I'm gonna play a couple of couple of play great plays or a couple of good plays that I that I have recorded during their baseball and during their softball. So that's gonna be coming up in November. I'm also gonna be doing. A couple of compilation videos, which are going to feature some baseball, actually some 14U baseball players and some varsity baseball players. At least the seniors this year. So that's going to be coming up in November. And then in December, so this is where the really big announcement comes in. Now I know it's only September and it's not December yet, but. I went to Kendall Norris's graduation party, and me and Jill came into agreement. And so, I'm going to so I'm going to be doing varsity basketball, so varsity girls and varsity boys basketball. So the schedule is not has not been announced yet, but I'm going to only do the varsity games. So the varsity games are at 7:30. I'm going to have the videos up the next day, and. I can't wait. So I'll basically be working by myself during the varsity boys basketball games. Uh, the coaches, if you want to know, is Jeff Detweiler and slanging W E I T. Those are the coaches for the varsity basketball. And then for varsity girls basketball, Amy Heilman. Tracy Colbert, Tim Campbell, and Adam Heilman. Those are the coaches for the varsity girls basketball teams. And I'll be working with Jill Norris for the varsity basketball games, the varsity girl basketball games. So I'll be doing them. And like I said, those will be up the very next day, like the like the uh, junior high football game that I'll be doing. So there's a lot of great content coming up. And yes, like I said earlier, I'm going to be doing varsity baseball next year. I'm also going to be doing 14U and 17U. So, for 17U baseball, by the way, um, we have a bye week next Sunday. And then we have one more game against at C-O-L-O-N-E-R. I don't know how to pronounce it. But that's the last game. I'm not sure if we will be playing. I don't know if the 17. Uh, so we play in the George B. Kelly Federation. So I'm not sure if we if they have playoffs for 17U. But obviously, when we get when we get close to that point, and Mike Griffin lets me know, I will make sure to pass pass the news to you viewers. And uh, yeah, so. So thank you viewers for watching the story behind Williamsburg Blue Park Games galore and the video also featuring announcements. Um, I want to also just, I want to give some like, I want to shout out Anthony Neary today is his birthday. Uh, he's going to be, he's going to, I'm going to do, do a compilation video of him in November. And then this past Sunday was Mike Raffner's birthday. He is our assistant coach for 17U, and he is our head coach for 14U. So I want to shout out, shout out him again. 
I uh, hope he had a good birthday last Sunday, and hopefully we'll see him October 1st. Thank you viewers for watching. As always, if you want to see more content like this, with like games and like announcement videos and countdown videos and stuff, be sure to give these videos a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe, turn the notification turn the notification bell on so you don't miss a single so you will be the first one to see all of the new content and all the new uploads. Uh, be sure you share these videos. If you have somebody that 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 enjoys Williamsburg sports and wants to see wants to see some videos, uh, be sure to share them. And if you are not a part of the Williamsburg Blue Pirate Games Galore Facebook group yet, um, you're welcome to join the group. Thank you viewers for watching. I hope you viewers enjoyed. And until the next video, this is Patrick from Williamsburg Blue Pirate Games Galore signing off.